All right, I just wanted to take a few minutes to explain one of the concepts that can be often misunderstood in AP psychology, and that's correlation. So we're going to spend a little bit of time talking about correlations in research and how to interpret those correlations, what they mean, and where to go from there. So let me first mention what correlational methods are. These descriptive research methods that you've learned about, uh, survey, naturalistic observation, case study, those often show us how one trait or a behavior, how those are related to another trait or behavior. And it just shows a relationship between two variables. And we're going to be getting into what variables are later on. But a correlation just expresses a relationship, a tendency, if you will. A correlation does not show causation. And I really want you to get that down in your notes that correlation does not equal causation. And it's one of those sentences that we're going to say a lot, because what happens is we start to assume when we see a relationship or a tendency between variables, we think that one causes the other. And that's not always the case. We'll talk about later when it, it can be the case. But for all these things we're talking about right now, it's not the case. So look at some of this data that um, I found for you. We have a moderate correlation between the number of people who drowned by falling into a pool with films that Nicolas Cage appeared in. So if you look at the, the years, you can see in 1999 that um, Nicolas Cage was in how many? Two films. And there were a, over 100 drownings, 110 drownings that same year. Okay. And as you look at this graph, you just see that as the number of films that Nicolas Cage appears in, as those increase, the more number of films he's in, the more people drowned by falling into a pool. Now, does that say one causes the other? No, it's just a tendency. It's crazy data. You can find this kind of thing anywhere that different things that are related to each other. Here's another one. I can find it. Here's another one. People who drown after falling out of a fishing boat, we find a moderate correlation between that and the marriage rate in Kentucky. So the more marriages that there were in Kentucky, the more people who drown after falling out of a fishing boat. Causal relationship? No. Doesn't mean that one caused the other. Another one. The per capita cheese consumption related to the number of people who died by becoming tangled in their bed sheets. I'm not kidding you. People will read this and they'll say, the more cheese I eat, the more likely I am to die by becoming tangled in my bed sheet. Well, yeah, the data shows that, but is that really saying that because you eat cheese, you're going to die by becoming tangled in your bed sheet? I don't think so. This one here, ice cream sales and shark attacks. Very, very high correlation here. High relationship that as ice cream sales increase, the more shark attacks that we see. Now, hopefully you can think through this and figure it out for yourself that we're, we're buying more ice cream at the same time of year that we're in the water, which would then equate to the possibility of more shark attacks, but not because I'm eating ice cream, I'm more likely to get attacked by a shark. That's not why it happens. So I just wanted you to see some examples of why just because variables are related to each other does not mean that they cause each other. It's super important. They'll ask you that on the AP exam. They'll ask you that on an FRQ, um, and they want to make sure that you know that. So now let's talk about how we interpret a, a correlation. How do we get the data to see what kind of a relationship that there is? Well, it's best to graph it out. It's easier to see it on a graph like I just showed you with scatter plots. Um, a scatter plot is the type of graph that we would use to look at a correlation. So a scatter plot is a graphed cluster of dots that represent the values of two variables. And we're looking to see as one increases, does the other increase or decrease, that sort of thing. So the slope of the points is going to suggest the direction of the relationship, whether it's a positive or direct relationship or a negative inverse relationship. So a positive relationship, jumping down to this, the last bullet there, is when one variable increases at the same rate or at some sort of a rate as the other variable. And so they both increase. So we call that a positive correlation, not because it's good, but because the variables are going to increase or decrease in the same direction. 
a negative or inverse correlation is going to be the opposite. It's going to be that as one variable increases, the other variable is going to decrease or go in the opposite direction. So a negative correlation, again, doesn't mean that it's bad. It just means that the two variables are going to go in the opposite direction. So let me give you a few examples. A positive correlation would be that the more time you spend running on a treadmill, the more calories you burn. Okay, again, not causal, but we see a tendency that the more we run on a treadmill, the more minutes on a treadmill, the more calories that we will burn. Another one, the longer your hair grows, the more hair that you have, the more shampoo that you need. Okay, positive correlation. The other way is also true. The less hair that you have, the less amount of shampoo that you will need. Okay, uh, let's see another one. As a person's level of happiness decreases, so does his level of helpfulness. Okay, so they're going in the same direction. They don't both have to go up or they both don't have to go down, but they both have to go in the same direction. Some negative correlations. The number of distractions that you have as you're taking a test, the lower your score on a test. So as that variable of distractions increases, the test score variable decreases. That's a negative. Those two variables are going in opposite directions. A student who has many absences, so an increase in absences is going to um, correlate with a decrease in grades, variables going in opposite directions. As the weather gets colder, air conditioning costs decrease. Okay, so those are just some examples of some positive and some negative correlations. When we come back to class, make sure I teach you the correlation cheer. It's really amazing and all AP students, AP psych students need to know the correlation cheer. So now I just want you to look at some scatter plots. The first scatter plot is going to show a positive correlation and it's going to show a very strong positive correlation. And we'll talk about what strong means when we, we're going to look at some numbers that go along with strong and weak. So a strong positive correlation in graph number one. In graph or scatter plot number two, there's a moderate or a medium positive correlation. In the third one, down bottom right, we see a small, not very, not very strong, a, a weak, somewhat negative correlation because we see that slope going in the opposite direction. And number four, there's no correlation at all. Those, those data points are not lining up on any kind of a slope, so we would say that there's no relationship between those variables, whatever they are. So now let's talk about how we put a number to a correlation. How do we know how strong that relationship is? So a correlation coefficient is a statistical number that measures the strength and the direction of a relationship. It's going to tell us how well one variable predicts another. So the higher the correlation coefficient, it's going to be have more predictive ability in that relationship. So the range of a correlation coefficient, this is where it gets a little bit confusing. The range is from negative one to positive one. But I want you to, to kind of get rid of a number line. Don't think number line on this negative to positive. The negative and the positive are just labels that we put on the, the relationship. Is it a negative correlation? If so, we put a negative symbol in front of the one. If it's a positive correlation, then we put a positive symbol in front of the number. And one would be a perfect relationship that they, those two variables, they increase or they decrease at the exact same rate. So the relationship gets weaker the closer that we get to zero. Now let me show you what I mean by that. This is the kind of number line that you want to look at and, and refer to when you're talking about correlation coefficients. So zero is always going to be like zero, no relationship, no correlation at all. The closer we get to one on either side of this number line, whether it's a positive correlation, we're going to get closer to a positive one, or a negative correlation, we're going to get closer to a negative one. Again, those Positive and negatives are just labels. So any number that you see, you want to look at the number first. It's going to be a point something. So a point three is going to be a weak 
relationship, a weak correlation. Then you're going to put your label in front of it, either positive or negative. So a positive 0.3 is going to be a weak positive correlation. A positive, I'm sorry, a negative 0.3 is going to be a weak negative correlation. The stronger relationships are going to be closer to one. So like a 0.9 is going to be a strong relationship. So think about this. Which correlation coefficient has a stronger relationship? A negative 0.9 or a positive 0.6? What do you think? If you said negative 0.9, you're correct. A lot of us get confused because we think negative. Well, that's got to be lower. Again, no. The negative only means the relationship direction, negative correlation. So it's a strong negative correlation. So what I want you to see here on this last slide is what some of these scatter plots will look like to be able to tell what kind of or how strong of a relationship that you have. So number one is a perfect positive relationship. That slope, those two lines, I'm sorry, those two variables, the dots are lining up right on top of each other, okay? A 0.9 in the next one, okay, it's a high positive correlation, but the dots aren't lining up directly on each other, but you can still definitely see the line going on there. The next one is a positive 0.5 relationship, correlation coefficient, and that's moderate to, to low positive correlation. You can still see a line, but the, the dots are not clustered as closely together. You want those dots to be as closely clustered together as possible. Then we go in the opposite direction. The next one, a negative 0.5. You see the dots are still clustered in the same with the same amount of space between them. They're just going in the opposite direction. So that would mean we have a negative correlation. Next one, a negative 0.9 is a strong negative correlation. Those plots are very, very clustered close together. And the, the last one there on the top, a perfect negative correlation. Those uh, plots lining right on top of each other. And then at the bottom left, you see a, a zero correlation, no correlation there at all. You can't even see a line beginning to form. So those plots are all over the place on the graph. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of help with correlation, correlation coefficient. It's going to be an important concept for you to know. And jot down any questions that you have so that we can make sure those get answered when we come back to class.